love it, breathe it, have to do it, couldn't, couldn't fathom doing anything else. That's what it takes to be in this profession. Toast Meets Jam. It is an interview series featuring millennial female founders, and I'm very excited that today I have Pace Webb, who is the founder of Taste of Pace, here <laughs> to talk Hi. about um, her journey and what she does. So thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. Um, and I just want to get started by letting you share what you do. Um, what is Taste of Pace, uh, your business? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about it. I feel like I should have my bikini right now. We're so <laughs> luxuriating on this fine <laughs> afternoon at the beach. <laughs> So fancy. There was sunbathing. Venice. Um, <clears throat> well, Taste of Pace is the name of my catering company. And I started it just, I think how a lot of people start some venture like that. You're too stupid to know what it really takes. <laughs> no, Ignorance I just, is bliss. Ignorance is such I bliss. Hear? I uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted I knew I wanted to cook, so I was working all kinds of jobs. You know, restaurants, catering, food styling. I just was like, ah, what is what am I gonna do? But I knew I had to cook. So people just started asking me like, oh, do you want to cater this party? Can you do this? I was like, I could do that. Not really knowing what I was doing, but I was like, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and then I was finally like, well, I guess this is what we're doing now. <laughs> just sort of the path of least resistance, and it just sort of happened organically. And uh, we just kind of been building and building and having more fun and more challenges and more fun and more challenges. And that's just kind of the way it is. And we do mostly um, regional Italian, I would say. Very produce-centric, mm -hmm. bright colors. Mm -hmm. And we Love do... Love a good colorful palette. Oh, yeah. Very... I'm like rainbow bright on the plate. <laughs> so you said you, uh, you knew you needed to cook. Were you... Have you always been passionate about cooking? You know, it's really funny. I... Uh, I have not always been passionate about cooking. I mean, I guess you could go back and say that I loved the, um, like, chocolate chip cookies with my grandmother. And there's yeah. all these cute pictures of us. That was a very Bonnie experience. And I loved her, you know, like, kid food. Like the, you know, super dry roast beef and the <laughs> iceberg lettuce out of the ranch and bake yep, those all yes. over. That yeah. was like, yummy! Yeah. You know, like <laughs> little dinner. kid food um, that had an emotional attachment to it. But in terms of really starting to cook, I had a boyfriend in college, and he would, like, make all these amazing meals out of leftovers, and I was just baffled. I was like, what? You did what? Out of what? <laughs> this ingredient plus this ingredient? Yeah, it was so creative and so resourceful, so that kind of got my brain thinking in the right way. And then I would go out, you know, as a teenager um, with some of my friend's parents, we'd go out to these really nice dinners, and I was just like, oh, okay, what's this? Yeah, I could get into this. And I like to eat it. I love to eat it. And I was I like, like I don't know it. about cooking. I was like, okay, I get done with this. And then um, I had cancer, colon cancer, my last year of high school. Oh, God. So young. It was young. so crazy, so young. And that just got my brain thinking in a different way, like what goes in my body, what goes on my body. And so it was this real kind of slow journey to discovering more about food and all the healing properties of it, the functionalities of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of nutrition, fear, and then moving to Italy, it was like, ah, we at home <laughs> <laughs> and everything is great. And you, you know, that's where slow food was, mm -hmm. was born. You eat what's in season, you eat what's available, you cook everything from scratch, you shop every other day. Mm -hmm. And that sort of really relaxed my mentality about food. Mm -hmm. And that's when I th I thought, okay, I have to, I have, I, this is, I'm game on. Game I am doing on. this like ten years ago, so I was like, I must do something with this this food this, stuff, this food, this food thing this you speak of here. <laughs> and so I, I have the Italians to thank for opening my eyes in that way and just making you know a, a positive relationship mm -hmm. with food. So now it's not so much about the uh, health or the, the trends and fads and low fat or anything. It's just about 
good, clean food sources. Mm -hmm. So awesome, you know, grass-fed, non-hormone beef and, um, you know, local produce as best as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely eating seasonally is like I'm hugely, that's probably my biggest thing is I'm really big on eating seasonally because it just doesn't taste good. If it's not in season, I feel like it's almost cheating if it's not in season. So I, uh, I, that's my thing. You really started exploring food more because for your own personal health yes. and your own personal wellness. Um, and did you come up with sort of a food philosophy through trial and error as you were kind of figuring out what worked? Yeah. I did. Absolutely. I think that, um, your emotional well-being, cause so many people eat for emotional reasons. Mm -hmm. I call it eating your feelings. Yep. Um, you know, we do that if I've had a bad day sometimes like I need potato gratin. I'm going to eat my feelings now. <laughs> you know, it's like, I joke about it. Yeah. I'm aware of it. I'm very aware. aware. Awareness That's the thing is, too. Yes. Awareness is key. So now it's, it's really, I don't pay attention to the fads and trends. I've been through that roller coaster of every, I'm exposed to every single one. There is value in most of these that I, you glean from, but at the end of the day, eating good, clean food sources and tons of vegetables and good fats. It's like, it's just not science. We, you know, as Americans, there's a huge business in the diet world, in the nutrition world. So people are always like this new thing and this miracle yep. thing and this thing. And like right now it's green juices and I'm obsessed with green juices. And I think that's my answer to getting vegetables in the morning. It's not the answer to getting my vegetables every day, but that's okay. I still think it is. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> there's no kind of like, aha, yeah, right. you know, it's just like, not. Fats are bad. Fats are good. Exactly. Carbs are bad. Ooh, but if you cook a carb in a fat, it's good. It's all this stuff where I'm just like, blah, 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 yeah. Blah. yeah. You know, and so it, yeah, clean food sources eating seasonally and eating a ton of vegetables. It's like you're going to have you're going to have naturally just a good thing going on inside your yeah. body and if you're eating mindfully and for the right reasons. One thing I think is really interesting is like you've taken your passion for food in a lot of different directions now with Taste yes. of Pace. How have all these things come about? Was that, um, like, did you always envision that you'd have sort of a multi-pronged approach to food, to entertaining and hosting? Yeah, I've always been one. I get bored kind of easily. Um, and I like to do, which is from like 10 things at once. I'm like, I gotta have all this, you know, stuff happening to really make me feel like you know, yeah. life and things are going on. Um, so the answer is no. I don't know that I consciously thought like, let's just do everything. Hey. It was more like, yes, we'll do that. Yes, we'll do that. Oh God, now we're doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's sort of the way, I mean, that's the way the machine grows mm -hmm. and builds. And that's the way I feel like I'm at my best is when there's just so much going on. Um, it's the best. Yeah, where do you, you know, want things to go? Where do you see it in five, ten years? It's definitely, it definitely is a like a multi-tiered uh, brand. Um, we've got the catering part, which is awesome and continues to grow. And there's, you know, the media career that I think a lot of chefs see as attractive these days because it's a it's a more efficient way to make a living. But I, at the root of it, for me. It's just so much fun. Yeah. You know, I love being on camera and, you know, doing cooking and learning and teaching other people yeah. what I love. That is so fun. It's really about sharing. At the mm -hmm. very essence of why I like that direction is it's because you get to share what you love with as many people as will tune in and watch. Yeah. And that is just uh, the best feeling. Um, and then I have a fast casual concept that I'm super stoked about. So we'll see that be taking off this year. Oh, exciting. Um, You're like going to keep us on the edge of our seats here. <sighs> what you going to do next? What's going to be? Next? Um, but at the root of it is like, yes, how can I continue to create my artistry yeah. and expand and expand and expand? So how did you get your foot in the door with some of these other things? Like going from being in the kitchen to, um, stepping into a media role. You know, people, I think because food is so popular these days that people automatically reach out to you because you're a chef and they, you know, say, oh, can you do this cooking segment here and there? And then I started doing it. I was like, this is so much fun. I'm getting paid to do this. This is so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just being open, yes. basically. Like, well, first doing good work. People recognize the good work and then right. opportunities kind of yeah. start pop in their head. And that's the way I like this all. I like that it's kind of evolving yep. sort of naturally. And I have a podcast on CBS now. And that's Ooh, super fun. So we what's it called? Once a week. It's called Top Talk. So Top, Top is the acronym Talk. for Taste of Pace. And that's where you just get to have tons of fun, talk about everything, food and beverage, 
and ham it up okay. and you know but it's like that opportunity was presented it was like yes, yes. I'll, I'll take that yes you know and I, I always judge an opportunity by how do I feel if I say yes to it how do I feel if I pass on mm-hmm. it and if it feel if I feel like if I feel like I'm shrinking myself by passing on it then I don't pass mm. if I may not be like 110 percent stoked about taking the opportunity but I'll regret it if I don't so I take it take and it. It, it's expansive What would, advice would you offer to someone who's just getting started, they have that passion for food, they want to get their foot in the door, they, they want to have a catering company, or they want to be a celebrity chef, or whatever it is. Like, what's the first thing that they should do? Go do it first for somebody else and see if you like it. Because mm. you have not like it, love it, breathe it, have to do it, couldn't, couldn't fathom doing anything else. That's what it takes to be in this profession. So if oh, someone yeah. wanted to join your team and give it a try and, I don't know, like you said, kind of just put their foot in the door, how do you recommend that someone would make, like, approach you or another um, professional in the business? Um, we do really great internships. We yeah. are in that in that situation a lot. They're like, they want to learn. But it has to be the right kind of person for the environment. Mm-hmm. So the number one thing that I see that's kind of missing from the millennial generation is resourcefulness. Mm. You know, it's like, we have a list of things for you to do. We need you to go do them and ask the most, the, only the smartest and minimal questions possible. Because mm. there's just no time yeah. to be coddling. It becomes a liability mm-hmm. if we're coddling you constantly. You can't figure something out. Mm-hmm. So I would say resourcefulness is the number one thing that's going to get you through life and make you stand out and get you to the top faster. Mm-hmm is finding out how to do things. Do you think that was one of the keys to your success and getting to where you are today? Absolutely. If you don't know the answer, find out. And there are always ways to find out. If you don't have what you need, go get it. Mm -hmm. And there's just where there's, there's just always a way, you know, there's just, you have to imagine that there are no real barriers in front of you. There are obstacles and challenges, but you have to have that imagination of the end goal Mm -hmm. all the time of getting from small to large Mm -hmm. from it being done. Always away. Yes. This has been incredibly helpful and informative and so much fun to learn about how you got things started. Um, Now, though, I think it's time to move on to a little bit of fun. Um, So I'd like to play this game where I ask you to pull some completely random questions out of this jam jar here. Um, and they're not going to be anything about taste of pace at all, but they're going to be all about finding out who you, you are. So um, if you just want to reach on in and, <laughs> and see what we've got. Oh, what's your go-to karaoke song? Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Um... I can't not believe that you would have this outfit on and not have a go-to karaoke song. <laughs> you already told us you love disco. Love okay, dancing. straight on through, heart. Oh, okay. Have you actually gotten up on stage and sang it? Yep. Ooh, okay. Recently? Nope. No. Do you want to practice right now? It's been a good yeah. few years. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I hear, I hear like a hear backup it? career for you. Yeah, girl. <laughs> no, if I weren't cooking, I would definitely be a rock star. <laughs> Definitely. I love the conviction you have, like, oh. as if there's no way that wouldn't happen. Like, it's, well, I would absolutely be a rock star. D- duh. duh. If I could, like, keep the same body for another 150 <laughs> years, I'd be a modern dancer and a singer. Like, I'd have two more careers. Mm. Next life, maybe? Oh, for sure. Yeah, okay. No doubt. No doubt. Um, I hear that, you know, medical breakthroughs might make this possible. So I'm going to, again, hang on the edge of my seat. <laughs> wait for this. I'll wait for it. Okay. Uh, okay, back in. If you were food, what food would you be? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake? <laughs> okay. Do you any have kind of chocolate any cake. Kind. Like, mm. I don't hate on chocolate cake at all. It, I, I, it's like, if it's from Ralph's, that's cool. If it's like no. homemade the fanciest, that's cool. Like, it, I don't discriminate between chocolate cake. No. I love all chocolate cake all day, every day. Where did the love come from? Is there a story behind that? Do you have like, an association? My grandma. Yep. Uh, would be do like this the same one I was baking the chocolate chip yep. cookies with. She would uh, make these chocolate cakes. It was like not very sweet on the crumb part, almost like a buttermilk chocolate cake. And then the frosting would be just like crack sweet. Like I could see it, <laughs> I could taste it right now. And it's just like the it's the best. 
So it would be light, kind of a light chocolatey brown. It was like milk, confectioner sugar, and cocoa powder. Then maybe a dash of vanilla all whipped together. It was just amazing. Oh, do you make that same cake? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Do you serve it? Um, in cupcake form. In cupcake form. Yeah. A modern twist on mm -hmm. it. Do you, what's, what is your go-to dessert that you'd like to serve? Is it a chocolate cake? Like, do you feel like that actually represents, like, who I you are? I think, um, a really great dessert that we do is this, um, this tart. This really gorgeous, like, hazelnut tart with caramelized mm -hmm. apples, confit, lemons, and a coffee mascarpone whipped cream. I didn't understand all of it, but that it sounds good. So that is like, yep. Yeah. Coming right up. Did it have any chocolate in it? Okay. Which now I'm so, confused by. chocolate, we do like a, a almost flourless chocolate cake with a creme fresh whipped cream and an or like a, a satsuma segment, little orange segment. So you've got with the cream and the orange, you've got like a creamsicle thing going on with dark chocolate because dark chocolate loves a creamsicle. Mm, Just trust me it? on this. It does. And then a caramel sauce and a little bit of Florida cell. So you've just got like Damn. flavor, flavor, flavor. Damn. Yeah. Math is watering. Little mess? Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. What's your Starbucks name? Do you understand this question? Like, what do you get called? What ends up on your cup? Ace. Oh, Ace. That's yeah. kind of cool. That's kind of cute. I feel like it's like a cute little boy's name. Ace. <laughs> Ace. Ace Ventura. I could go with that. Pet detective. <laughs> Chef detective. That's pretty easy, though. Yes. Okay, let's do one more. Okay. I like to ask people that question. Sometimes you get the most bizarre things. Right. Name something very few people know about you. Mm, yeah. Glad this is edited. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm such a loud mouth. I feel like people know. Ev there's no, I have no secrets. There's no, like, hidden talent. I just blab my business mm. to everybody. Like, not like a weird mole or like. Oh, I have a ladybug tattoo on my upper hip that I've had since I was 15. <laughs> there you go. Some oh. dirt for you. You're so fierce. Is <sighs> that during your, like, your rebellious stage? It was so bad. Such oh. a bad girl. I got a ladybug tattoo. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Take a story off camera because I want to hear about it. Um, <laughs> well, I think that's perfect. That is um, everything we need to know about you. So you are <clears throat> obviously in love with food. Um, so much more to see from you behind the kitchen, in front of the camera, and uh, maybe in a mall area near us with Fast Casual. We'll see. Um, we can call you Ace, and you may respond to it. Um, and if ever, ever we are to be eating a chocolate cake and we need someone to help us finish it, you are the first person to call. Girl. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, it has been so great getting to sit down with you today. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, it's been wonderful.